Hello and a warm welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video I'll be talking about first registration of unregistered land and namely about the process a conveyancer needs to go through before he or she lodges an application for first registration to the land registry and in part two of this video I will explain how to lodge such an application. So this video's topic is probably an unusual one for a first video as property law has a vast array, sorry, a vast array of topics. But I remember when I was a law student, I was dreading the thought of one day having to deal with unregistered land. It just sounded too complicated and you had to remember too many things for the exam. I had not had to deal with unregistered land until a year ago and I must admit that I was terrified when I saw a few thick packets of deeds with documents dating to 1800. It isn't that bad, I promise. Um, once you have done two or three applications and dealt with the land registry requisitions, if you had the pleasure, you will not fear unregistered land anymore. I will not be able to cover everything, however my advice to you is that whenever you deal with unregistered land and especially when you deal with it for the first time, please refer to the Land Registry's Practice Guide number one as you will find it most helpful. For the purposes of this video, we will be dealing with a scenario of a freehold land subject to a five-year lease which Alan and Bob, the executors of the late George's estate, have instructed their conveyancer to transfer to Mark and Anne, the beneficiaries, who will hold the property as tenants in common in equal shares. The first thing to do is to obtain title deeds to show the estate owner's right to be in possession of the land. This right should be established with a good rural title that is at least 15 years old. The document should contain a description of the land, deal with both the legal and equitable interests and show previous ownership. So this would mean identifying a deed to use to commence the chain of ownership, which will end with the current estate owner. Take the following scenario. In this scenario, you will have to go back to 2003 at least to find a good root of title. However, the first good root of title is in the sale document from Bruce to Jamie in 1990. Once the root document is established, an unbroken chain of ownership right up to when the property passed to the executors must be shown. You may find that the root documents may refer back to an earlier document, in which case you should also include that document. You will need to repeat this process until you get to document which does not refer back to an earlier one. In case of the late George, in our scenario, the legal title will have passed to the executors, therefore the ground of probate will also have to be produced as part of the chain of ownership. The deeds must also be checked for any mortgages taken out by the late George and previous owners and they must be included in our application for first registration. When a mortgage is paid off, uh, the mortgage deed will have a note by the lender confirming that the mortgage is repaid and it will be signed and or sealed by the lender. If any mortgages are not paid off, they may be binding on the property, therefore inquiries must be made of the lender. You must also check that if the documents that form the chain of ownership are originals and that they are properly executed and that the appropriate duty has been paid. You will also need to apply for an official search of the land charges register in form K15. The search must be made against the name of each estate owner and cover the whole period of ownership during which the charges could have been registered in that name. You must also search against the administrative area in which the land is located. If the title deeds are complete, they should contain previous search results on disposition since 1926. If the search certificates have not been retained, it would be prudent to carry out searches against all of the estate owners that the investigation of title has revealed. So the search result will be in a form either K17 or K18. K17 will be relevant if no entries are revealed and K18 if entries are revealed. 
However, if you think that one of the entries may affect the land being registered, you should obtain a copy of that entry from the land charges department and a copy of the document to which the entry relates to. Only then you'll be able to establish the relevance and if relevant, and certify next to that entry on the actual form that the entry affects the land being registered. And the last bit I will talk about is the plan. So the general rule is that a plan for first registration must be prepared to a suitable scale and based on the ordnance survey map. You may find, however, that one of the documents in the chain of title contains the plan. So the land registry will then complete the registration, provided that the extent of the property on that plan is not in doubt and mirrors the current ordnance survey map. If the land registry cannot identify the property, they may ask for a new plan to be lodged. For more detailed information on plans, please go to this website. Thank you for tuning in and I hope you have found this video useful and look forward to seeing you in part two of this video. If there is any other video you would like to see, please leave a comment below and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. Thank you.